Hello, everyone. This is Mike Azbiski, Technical Evangelist with Salt Security, and welcome to another episode of Anatomy of an API Attack. Today, we're going to be covering elastic injection or elastic stack injection. Before we dive into the specifics of elastic injection, you might be asking yourself, uh, what is elastic stack or elastic search? Uh, so very briefly, right, it's kind of a, a multi-purpose uh, database. Uh, in this case, you can actually see some um, uh, rankings for commonality of databases, what is frequently downloaded. Uh, this, this data set was actually taken in December 2021, but you can see that uh, Elasticsearch was ranked number eight. Uh, it's a really popular database uh, because it can hold very large amounts of data, uh, just like, you know, Microsoft SQL or MySQL, uh, Oracle databases, right? Those kind of heavy hitters that you often see in the enterprise. Uh, but Elasticsearch is also there. Uh, and it's, it's typically built up of multiple components. Uh, Elasticsearch, which is kind of the search engine and query engine, uh, Logstash to gather the log data uh, and do analytics on it, and then uh, Kibana to provide visualizations of all this data. Uh, in some cases, Logstash is swapped out for something like FluentD. Uh, you're more likely to see that in uh, Kubernetes or microservices architectures, but uh, it just kind of gets into performance of the, the log gathering mechanism. Uh, but Elk is, is often what this is uh, referred to, or Elastic Stack, uh, depending on you know where you're coming from or how long you've been kind of working with Elastic. Uh, it's extensible, right? It's an extensible search engine. Uh, provides that log storage and analytics by virtue of Logstash, uh, and the data is uh, by virtue of Kibana, as I was saying. Uh, this is actually really commonly used for uh, security information and event management, or SIM. Uh, Elastic actually provides an open source distribution of it, uh, but you can actually uh, uh, procure it as a uh, paid commercial offering as well. So it, it is actually very commonly used as a SIM in some organizations. Uh, and just as an example of prevalence of Elastic, but also uh, how it can lead to data exposures, uh, the company CVS Health actually uh, experienced data leak in March 2021. Uh, some of that data was actually an exposed Kibana database uh, that wasn't very well covered in the media. But if you look at some of the screenshots, you'll see some Kibana uh, metadata identifiers that really uh, hi highlight that it was, in fact, a Kibana database. To understand the flow for elastic injection, I sometimes like to use this reference architecture. It is simplified. You may not have all of these components in your enterprise architecture, uh, but typically you do see presence of uh, application delivery controllers, ADCs, or network load balancers, or NLBs. Uh, there's typically uh, numbers of web and application servers, sometimes they're combined, they can be split out, it, it does vary. Uh, and then there's data stores as well, or databases. And then the way we usually get access to data uh, is, is via APIs, right? We talk about that very frequently here at Salt Security. Uh, so typically there's, there's many instances of API gateways. Uh, there's typically outer or external facing API gateways and then inner API gateways or internal API gateways that might mediate uh, inner API calls, right? Because you, you have combinations of things that are external facing. Um, and then internal APIs that are used by uh, other systems, right? And you know, within your internet, that stuff's not often exposed, uh, but it can happen. All right, so in the case of elastic injection, what is happening is that um, an attacker uh, can initiate API calls with uh, elastic queries in the uh, API request. And by virtue of how the elastic stack is configured in a given enterprise or misconfigured in this case, uh, that query can kind of get passed blindly to the backend Elastic uh, services. Uh, often it is a post um, request, right? And, and you'll see in, an, uh, in, an, in a minute here what an actual request looks like uh, for a given um, multi-query or multi-search query. Uh, Elastic is going to execute that, right? Because it, that's what it's designed to do. It, it is a search engine, uh, it's a database engine and data analytics, right? In this case, it just kind of presumes that somebody needs a piece of data and, that, and that's its role. Uh, in this case, it's not actually checking authorization levels because uh, it, it might not have been configured that way, right? The enterprise architects might not have um, 
conceived that somebody would access this data externally or maybe the integration team integrated with the Elastic instance, instance without kind of sharing that knowledge, right? And now you have internal data sets that are exposed externally. Uh, and then that author, unauthorized data set is in, in turn returned to the API caller, right? Because that's what the uh, API gateways are doing. They've mediated that call. It seemed legitimate, right? The, the Elastic query was, uh, was well formatted and the person had access to do that potentially not authorized to that particular data set. But as I said, you know, in this integration scenario, uh, authorization levels just weren't being checked properly. So what does a request actually look like? Uh, here, here's a, a fairly trivialized one, but somewhat scrubbed as well, right? Because we didn't want to identify uh, the impacted company. Uh, this is actually based on some research from our SALT Labs uh, Threat Research Division. Uh, but that you know, the the way the threat researchers kind of discovered this is uh, that they observed that uh, these post requests were present in the application flows, uh, and it very clearly is an elastic, um, elastic stack query. In this case, it's uh, M search that's uh, very commonly used to identify the functions for searching for pieces of data or multiple pieces of data that underscore M search. Right, and this this was essentially a, a proxy connection back to that uh, backend Elastic services, like I showed in the prior uh, flow diagram. Uh, really, all the attacker needs to do here is uh, th this post payload down here or message body. Uh, you'll see the highlighted bits that are kind of the most relevant for the attack. Um, but in this case, that Elastic instance was st storing. Uh, multiple tables and multiple data sets for all different companies, right? But that was um, controllable by the API caller. In this case, as an attacker, I want to manipulate those things. So now I'm going to start to manipulate, well, what is the company domain, right? I don't necessarily care what the expected flow is. Now I want to see, are there other companies for which uh, this particular organization is storing data? Uh, I can manipulate the user request, as you can see in that second highlighted bit. And then I want to search for cust, cust data or customer data, right? Because the index is also controllable here. Uh, and then the end result, right? If you remember from that flow is that the Elastic Stack instance and all of its moving pieces uh, returns the, the data set for that query, right? Because it's, it's doing what it was designed to do. Uh, it's completing the request for that uh, multi-search capability and returning the data set. Uh, so it should be pretty apparent, right? Attackers can readily manipulate these things. So if you are exposing Elastic instances to uh, internet facing consumers, this can be a problem, right? So you need to consider how is my data that is stored in Elastic accessible externally and make sure those calls are uh, properly filtered. You know, access controls are important, but you also do wanna be looking out for these types of things, right? You know, maybe you are using Elastic uh, to serve external customers and you're using it as a multi-purpose database that way. But if it is your organizational SIM, uh, you wouldn't necessarily want a e-commerce customer to be querying uh, Elastic in the back end. Uh, those inner API calls, they're, they're not validating, right? So we, we saw in the flow, the inner gateway instances aren't, aren't validating those access levels. And, you know, that's typically where you do the fine grained authorization uh, and, or, or, and or in Elastic itself, right? You can configure Elastic to do higher levels of authorization. And Elastic does provide very good security guidance on, you know, the, the right things you should do or security best practices. Unfortunately, they're not always followed because of the complexity of enterprise architecture. Uh, and, you know, in this case, it was unauthorized data disclosure. Uh, this particular attack could have also been used to create an application layer denial service attack. As you can see uh, in that screenshot on the post request, there was a size parameter and that could also be manipulated, right? So now you can, can create kind of a, a domino effect of uh, increasing query sizes and in turn uh, impacting the availability of all, uh, not just the Elastic services, but also uh, your web servers in this case. Uh, 